So you're thinking about using shipping containers to build your next home, right? Well, there's a lot of hazards that you need to be aware of before you go out and buy your shipping containers for your new home. Let's go over that in this video. Hi, I'm Larry. I'm an architect and I've been fascinated by all the cool things you can build with shipping containers. And today let's talk about hazards that you need to be aware of before you go out and build any home or any building with shipping containers. There's four hazards that you need to be aware of before you go out and buy any shipping container for your new home. Number one, lead paint. Back in 1978, the federal government in the United States outlawed all lead and paint. Some states actually outlawed it even earlier than that. But there are still some buildings with lead paint in them. And as you know, lead paint is very dangerous and it can cause all kinds of neurological issues, particularly with children. But in the modern days, lead paint is still used in some of the paints on shipping containers. The reason why is because the salty seas can really do a lot of damage to the paint and to the painted sides of a shipping container and lead actually acts as a little bit more of a protection to the actual shipping container itself and so they use lead sometimes in the paint and you can have it tested before you commit to buying this shipping container that you're considering to use for your home um, by you can test it by getting a kit, even at Home Depot, and I'll leave a link down below. Or you can have a professional go out and, and test it for you. If you did already receive a shipping container and you did find that it has lead paint on it, be very cautious because you don't want to start cutting holes for windows and doors through the lead paint because then it's going to make all that lead airborne and then you can easily consume it by breathing it in. Instead, you need to get all the lead removed from the area that you're going to be disturbing, cutting and so forth. And it needs to be removed by a specialist who's certified to do that. So there's three methods that you might want to consider about dealing with lead paint. Number one is the easy one. Just don't buy the container that you know has lead paint. And number two is remove the lead paint using a certified lead paint person that is experienced and licensed to do so. Or number three is to encapsulate it. And you can encapsulate it certain ways like painting over it or putting some other kind of uh, finish over it to where it will not be exposed to anyone to be touching it or breathing it or putting it in her mouth, particularly children. So be careful with any ship, shipping container that, because it might have lead paint in there. And if it does, you need to deal with that promptly and properly. The second type of hazard is pesticides. The wooden floor in all of the shipping containers is oftentimes sprayed with a pesticide. And the pesticide obviously is to keep any of the insects from getting into the cargo that they're shipping across the lands. This pesticide can actually off gas and cause harm to whoever's occupying that container as a house. So you need to have that dealt with. One way you can tell what pesticide was put into the wood uh, is by looking at the door of the shipping container, like my little model, on the shipping container there is a label. And the label actually tells you what kind of pesticide is used inside of that shipping container. As far as the label goes, I have an article that describes everything that is on that label. And it can tell you a whole lot about that shipping container, including the type of pesticides that it's in the wooden floor. So there's methods that you can follow just as we discussed with lead paint if it has pesticides in it. 
Number one, just don't buy the shipping container if it has pesticides in it. It may be difficult to find one that doesn't though. And number two is to have it removed, have the whole, all the wood flooring removed from the whole shipping container. That way you never will have to deal with any off-gassing of pesticides ever again, unless it's on the sidewalls and then you can paint over that too. And speaking of which, that's the third way, is encapsulating it. If you encapsulate the wood floor, then you can use um, another layer of like a vinyl on top of it. And if you do that, or you can use um, a wooden floor, if you're gonna use a wooden floor on top of the wooden floor, or pre-engineered wood floors are really ideal for this. And when you put the pre-engineered wood floor on it, before you do that, you're going to want to put this liner on top of the existing wood floor. And you'll, tie, you'll tape all the edges all the way around the perimeter. And anywhere the liner is overlapping itself, you tape those, those seams also. Then you can put the, um, the pre-engineered wood flooring on top of that. Another method of encapsulating the wood floor is by using concrete. Lightweight concrete can be used on top of the wood floor after you put a similar kind of lining over it as we just discussed for the pre-engineered wood. Instead you put the lining there, you make sure you do all the taping and then the lightweight concrete can also have some reinforcing into it which is a welded wire fabric and that put into the concrete will help the concrete from cracking. It, um, now, concrete does crack, and you can control where those cracks are by actually scoring along the area that you say, well, if it's gonna crack, I want it to crack here. So that's a control joint, uh, and you can have a joints all through out, out, out there in a construction joint as well. So those are the ways you can, you can encapsulate it. If you also, if you wanted to put tile on top of the wood floor, again, you're gonna to wanna to put the light lining on top of the wood floor, tape all of the seams, and then you'll be laying tile on top of that liner on there. Now, one word of caution, if you're going to use concrete or if you're going to use um, tile over the wood floor, is that it's going to make the floor a lot heavier and it's also going to make the floor um, actually higher up. So you can take away some of your headroom that you would have normally. Engineered wood floor is not very thick, so I wouldn't really be too worried about headroom being lost using pre-engineered wood floor. But with the concrete and the tile, you will lose headroom. Also, because it's thicker, because the concrete floor or the tile floor is thicker than what it would been, have been with just the old wood floor, you're going to need to work the design of door thresholds to match that higher floor, particularly if you're going to have the exterior door when you're stepping in or out of the, of the shipping container house, you're gonna be stepping up higher to get inside. So those are things to consider if you're going to encapsulate it with concrete or with, with tile. And a third hazard that you need to be aware of is the chemicals that were shipped in the shipping container when it was used as a shipping device. And the chemicals could actually have a lot of toxicity into it and it could send all kinds of off gases into what then will become your home. And so it's a little difficult to find out what kind of cargo was in the shipping container. The records are not readily available to the buyer. Sometimes they are and you should ask the salespeople if they do know what the what kind of cargo was being shipped inside of there. And there's also some testing uh, agencies that can test to see if there is any off-gassing inside of the shipping container. They put these tubes inside, close it up, and it captures some of the off-gassing and it can read and gauge what kind of chemicals are in there. But this is not always that accurate either. So you just, it's, it's a word of caution 
that uh, shipping containers are made to carry just about anything. And unfortunately, some of those things of cargo are toxic and it can off gas into your house unless you are able to uh, encapsulate it similar to the way we talked about with the lead paint and with the pesticides. Now the fourth hazard that you will want to consider and to look for is structural damage. Some of the structural damage on the shipping container is going to be very obvious when you see it. If you just see creases on the side of the shipping container and dents, which is somewhat common because when the crane picks these up and it carries over and it can bang up against other shipping containers as they're stacking them on the ship or onto the land. Um, some of those dents you might be able to live with because if you're going to be putting a siding, for example, over that, that type of shipping container and the sides with the dents and you'll not, you won't even see it. And by the way, I had another, vid another video talking about different kind of sidings that you might want to consider to put on here and another video talking about how to install siding because it's pretty tricky with shipping containers. I'll leave a link down below. Now, other structural damage areas are commonly at the doors. The doors will sometimes the hinges will break or actually the latch will break. It won't open squarely and that kind of indicates that perhaps there's there's some structural damage because the actual jam, the side of the door that the door is, is hinged up against, that is a structural member just as these are. And all the loads are designed to be placed on the four corners of the shipping container. So structurally, if the doors are damaged, it's possible that so is the structural integrity for the side of the doors too. So look for that particularly. Those are some kind of common structural problems with shipping containers that uh, you need to look out for before you purchase one. If this video has been helpful to you, give me a thumbs up. Also, would you subscribe to this channel and join me when we explore all the cool things you can build with shipping containers.